It's post time, friends! Today's game is Cubitos from AEG, or Ms. Alderac, if you're nasty. Designer John D. Clare's newest entry combines bag building without a bag and racing. In a world populated entirely with cube-shaped beings, the one with the fastest lap is king, and honey, you should see me round a curve. Today we're going to take a lap around one of four exciting tracks in our provided review copy and find out if the best cube will win. Probably yes, since that's how a race works? In our oversized box, we have both the large 20-page rulebook that houses not only clear examples of setup and game rules, but also detailed information on each of the game's ability cards, a must for reference, and a handy one-page reference sheet that's bigger than I'd like it to be for ease of keeping on the table. Past those, we have two double-sided track boards and the fan boards with the individual player boards. Those set aside to reveal Cubitos' big gamble, these individual dice and token boxes. These were designed with the intent of housing both individual components here using the bottom flap, but also to hold the dice on the table during gameplay with this recessed top. What these end up being are functional but annoying cardboard stands that feel like they're not going to last very long. The bending of the fold joints didn't go smoothly for any of these, and while some of them took a pretty big kink when completed. Also, this box insert doesn't house them all in the center channel, leaving me having to store some of them underneath this flap. If that's an issue for you, and it's a minor annoyance for me, then... I don't know. Figure it out. Anyway, let's set it up and I'll teach you how to play. Three of us are going to play this game of Cubitos and we're taking on the roles of the running sheep, elephant, and monkey. Haven't you always wanted a monkey? We're using the recommended first game setup here, which means the nothing goes right track, hilariously consisting of only left turns, huh? and these eight ability cards. The rulebook has several recommended setups for these, and you can always just shuffle up and choose randomly if you enjoy chaos. There are seven ability cards for each animal, so the possibilities are... Well, okay, they're not endless, but they're pretty high. Each player gets a player board in their color and nine dice to start, consisting of seven light gray and two dark gray dice. I'm the first player, so I also get to use this free first player die to use this round. The object, like any race, is to cross the finish line first. How do you do that? By running, runner. Each round has a roll phase and a run phase, both of which are played by all players simultaneously. You're going to signal when you're done with each phase by turning over this phase token and then waiting ever so patiently for your fellow runners. The roll phase starts by you taking dice from your draw zone equal to your hand size. This starts at 9, as you can see on the board, but can be increased by both gaining these hand size tokens and also depending on how far behind the leader you are, denoted by these red lines on the track. You'll roll all the dice into the roll zone, and then move any dice showing an icon into the active zone. From here, your choices begin. You can choose to re-roll all the blanks in an attempt to gain more speed and money, but keep in mind that once you've gotten three dice into your active zone, you're risking a bust. Busting happens when you roll all blank faces in a single roll. If this happens, you'll take everything currently in your active zone and place it into discard. You can also choose to move any rolled dice into your discard zone as well, if you don't want them next turn. Your fans love drama, though, and they'll pull for you even more. When you bust, you can move your fan marker up one space, and then get whatever bonus in the space you just moved to. Once you've busted, or decided to stop rolling because you're happy with your results, you'll flip over your face token to the run side. Once everyone is ready to run, you'll all simultaneously spend your coins, which is any number in a circle on your dice, and move, represented by these feet icons. The special ability dice all have a thing they can do if you roll that icon, from bursting ahead with speed to gaining free rolls, even being able to ignore the topography on the track. Any circle numbers you roll can be combined with these square persistent credit tokens to buy additional dice for the number indicated on the card. Any unspent circle credits are lost but these tokens can be kept until they're spent. You can buy up to two dice per round, but they must be different from each other. Movement on the track is more or less a free-for-all, though you can't freely move onto the water spaces without a special ability. Moving onto or through other runners is allowed, though. Even stopping in the same space as another is fair game. Scattered around the track are various bonuses that you can nab if you stop on them. These include credit tokens, launch spaces, even the ability to remove a die from your pool. Once everyone's ran and spent to their heart's content, you'll flip over your phase token once again, and then pass the first player die to the next person, signaling a new round to begin. 
If any runner reaches, his, reaches the finish space, that will be the last turn of the game. If no one else crosses the finish line that turn, they win. If, however, two players cross, then whoever goes the furthest past the finish line is your winner. Cubidos is part Quacks of Quedlinburg and part Steampunk Rally. Quacks is near and dear to us here at GLHF Studios, so any game that comes close already has a leg up. Over the course of the game, you're going to be looking for synergistic ways to use these ability dice together, but as is often the case with mice and men, your best laid plans are subject to these tiny cubes of chance. We've often had the talk in our videos before about whether or not dice can ruin an otherwise delicious game. As I've said, I'm not a gamer that's chance averse, but I will also say that Cubitos often irked me in this regard. The rule book refers to the dice sides that do something as hits and the blanks as misses. The light gray dice will miss five out of six rolls on average. The dark gray will hit only one third of the time and the bonus start player die is your best friend on the table with a 50-50 hit rate. This results in rolling more blanks than you'd like and you'll quickly learn that the three dice you guarantee yourself before you bust is actually pretty good. Cubidos is going to test your patience. Additional ability dice can be as cheap as two credits or as wildly expensive as 14. While your fans are going to contribute money into your coffers, you're going to wonder why this is a racing game when it feels like sometimes you're just limping along. It's important to remember that Cubitos is an equal opportunity frustration machine and that everyone's going to be thwarted by the dice at certain points. Embrace the chaos for what it is. Barely controlled anarchy in a race that's much shorter than the board lets on. Playtime for Cubitos in the box says 30 to 60 minutes, and the shortness of the game is due partly to the fact that everyone's rolling and moving at once, but also to the fact that the shortest path on the starting map is 30 spaces. You only need to successfully roll 30 feet to get all the way around. While it can certainly feel good to have a couple dozen dice in your draw zone, you'll want to get comfortable with the fact that while starting with 9, you'll end up with 15 or so realistically. Additionally, Josh Wood's art direction absolutely sings on the table, and everything is so adorable that it's hard not to have a smile on your face even if you're rolling nothing but blanks. A ton of credit is due to the entire art team on this one. If you approach Cubitos for what it is, and not what you think you want it to be, you'll be pleasantly surprised and you'll really enjoy your hour with it. If you come at it expecting a tight strategic affair with neck and neck high stakes racing, there's plenty of other games that will fit that bill. Cubitos hits the mark for a tabletop game that introduces the concepts of synergy and efficiency without getting mired down in layers of heady rules. It's barely controlled anarchy, and I'm here for it. Cubitos provides simultaneous gameplay, some very interesting decisions on the track, adorable art, and light engine building. While the physical presence can be a little annoying, overall the speed and gameplay will outweigh those easily. Let's go through our checklist before I give you my final thoughts. In the box, rulebook clear and non-gender pronouns. While there were certain minutiae that I wanted spelled out more clearly and in a better order in the rulebook, overall it will easily guide you through the game's phases and provides a solid reference for each of the cards you'll inevitably have questions about. I also have personal knowledge that the rulebook will stand up decently to having fruit cup juice spilled on it, so that's a plus from me. It uses non-gendered second person pronouns you and yours throughout. Iconography clear. Yes. Numbers and circles mean coins. Each of the individual purchase dice icons are clear from one another, which is helpful to colorblind gamers at the table. And the usage of the dots around the icon to denote special circumstances is clear without being obtrusive. Everything you need to know stands out from that which you do not. Packaging well done. I'm less jazzed about this than I am about the game overall. AEG takes a page from FFG's center channel box design, which no one should ever do, and that forces you to either tuck a few boxes under one of the side flaps or abandon the insert altogether and deal with some pretty serious extra space. For my money, keep the insert. On the table, good representation. The four player runners are denoted by a sheep, lion, monkey, and elephant, and the ability cards bear an armored crab, baseball beaver, later hosen clad cheese, a rock star pineapple, a very fancy alpaca llama situation, an elegant dinosaur, adorable puppy, and finally a boxed up cat. None of the art is obviously gendered, but whenever the card text chooses to gender one of these ability cards, it's always male. Component quality. While the dice and runner tokens are smallish, they suit the game well and fit the theme. The ability cards are standard fare and could be sleeved depending on your tolerance for wear. The component boxes 
are a disappointment. While certainly thematic and adorable, function was obviously the primary goal here and usability was sacrificed. Most, but not all boxes, easily fit the components inside, but as I pointed out earlier during the unboxing, the assembly process isn't great and you end up with kind of a mess. A mixed bag here. Replay value. Very high. Dice games always lend themselves to avoiding repetition, and the inclusion of seven different cards for each of the eight characters means that you can very easily assemble a combination you've never played. Four distinct racetracks to play on also create new possibilities for each playthrough. Fun to lose. While the runaway leader issue is mitigated somewhat by the fact that you're usually either gaining money to buy new das dice or moving fast, Designer Claire includes a variant of the Quacks of Quedlinburg catch-up mechanic of giving you increased hand size based on how far behind the leader you are. This has made a difference in more than one of our games, and it helps someone who's playing more of a long game feel like they can still catch up. That being said, you're certainly at the mercy of your dice in this one, so if they fail you, and they will, it can be a little backbreaking. Cubidos is a neat game with lots of fun surprises built in. I adore bag building, and I'm one of those gamers that doesn't mind the randomness of the dice added in. If you can get past the somewhat disappointing boxes and enjoy the chaos at play here, then this will easily hit your table over and over. I will also add that I'm also the kind of gamer that really enjoys the balance of lightness and strategy that John D. Clare has built, and while I sometimes want a little more crunch, when I don't, this is the kind of game I reach for. I'm Nicholas, reminding you to help protect the game population. Always leave your cards. Hey everyone, if you liked our video, please hit that sub button and ring that bell for notifications. Check out all of our other offerings at goodluckhighfive.com, and please consider becoming a patron of the channel over at patreon.com slash glhfmagic. It helps us keep making reviews, videos, podcasts, and you can become a member for any dollar amount. We're also always looking for new games to review. You can reach us at glhfmagic at gmail.com. You can follow me, Captain N, the Game Master, at CaptainNGM on Twitter and Instagram, and follow the channel at glhfmagic. Remember, please shop at your local game store whenever possible. Until next time, I'm Nicholas, and good luck. High five.